Good evening and welcome to Healthline. I'm your host, Karen Boudry. Tonight we're talking teeth, specifically how to improve your smile. Many of us have things we don't like about our smiles and we may not know what is even causing the problem or if there's a simple or painless solution. My guest tonight is Dr. Corky Wilhite of the Smile Design Center in Metairie where they have literally helped hundreds of people over the years, maybe even thousands, I don't know, uh, improve like their smiles. Yeah. It is thousands. Okay, great. <laughs> That's how Good. long I've been doing this. Yeah, you have. And we, we've talked in the past, Dr. Wilhite, about this being truly an art in improving smiles. It, it's not something you can um, get a specialty in when you're in dental school, but you can focus on it later, and, and that's what you've done really with your practice, right? Yes, actually, um, you know, I've been out of dentist, into dentistry so long that um, cosmetic dentistry wasn't even a phrase at that time. Yeah. Oh. So, um, but a couple of years later, that got to be just, you know, beginning to be popular. And I found that I love that area, so it was um, something I pursued. And even today, uh, this many years later, there still is not a specialty for cosmetic dentistry. But one of the best ways to find a cosmetic dentistry is to um, go online. Uh, the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, which you can find aacd.com, is a place that gives you lots of cosmetic dentists who are members, also have achieved the different levels of credentials. So you can really find somebody that in your area that uh, should be uh, appropriate for you. All right. So one of the best ways, and we've, we've talked about this over the years, one of the best ways to figure out if a cosmetic dentist knows his stuff or someone who focuses on cosmetic dentistry really knows his stuff is to he or she excuse me um to look at the before and after photos because that that tells it all you know when you say a picture is worth a thousand words this is is truly a, a an example of that so we're just going to get right into it looking at some of these before and after cases and this is just people that um you know there's something that bugs them about their smile something that you know it may be you know from breaks or other problems, um, something that nature gave them, um, that they were born with, that they, they There's don't like. a lot of things that can go wrong. Yeah. Um, but when it's all right, it looks so good. That's what motivates people to have those things that go wrong fixed. This is the patient actually who had, had damage to one of her front teeth many years ago and it turned dark, which is not that unusual. Um, just she like a trauma, you know, just usually. something that hit. Mm -hmm. hit and it can head. be from you know, I mean, these teeth, these permanent teeth in the front usually come in at the age of around six, seven, or eight. And so it could be when they're very young, um, but usually within a few years, it turns dark if it's going to. And in her case, uh, it had been dark for a long time. So we're, our plan is to make that look better along with some other things, which were kind of obviously wrong here. And um, as we just were getting started, what we found was that the root of that damaged tooth also was doing what's called resorbing. And that's mm -hmm. where, a, usually it's a traumatized tooth, begins to lose its root. So that tooth actually had to be removed. But we were able to finish her up with a bridge that looks here as good oh, as real nice. teeth, um, while making her other teeth look straighter. And then she also did a little minor orthodontics on the bottom teeth to make them look nicer too. So here you can see all the teeth. I know that sometimes it's a little shocking to see that image, but. You can see all the changes we made this way better. Wow, yeah, absolutely. So a little like an Invisalign thing maybe on the bottom to, to straighten out. I, I know I can see what tooth you were talking about in particular um, you know, to the left of your screen past those, those front two teeth on the bottom that, exactly. that were, was just a little crooked. And so how long would it take for something like that to get ready then for, for her to go in and get all this done? You know, a typical amount of time for a case like this in that minor orthodontics is probably uh, three to six months. Okay. That's so not, not a bad. long time. And it's done with a little removable, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> getting over a cold. It takes uh, um, the removal appliance is something that can be uh, taken out if you're going to a party or you take it out when you're uh -huh. going to eat. And uh, um, so, you know, it's nice to be able to not have braces on right. to get that done. Especially if you're older, you know, it, it, there's still kind of a stigma about right. walking around over the age of 30 with braces and, and um, yeah. so you so can see this, this close yeah. up, it's mm. what's really um, easy to see here, like she still has obviously a problem, you know, on the second tooth here on the right side of the screen where she's got some gum recession, but you can see how much better that tooth looks. 
Um, but the tooth that's missing is actually this one. And you can't really even tell there's a missing tooth there because the you know, connection between the two teeth that are supporting that on this bridge are so um, natural looking. And the way that we've been able to make that look at the gum line is also very natural looking. Um, so even though we were able to you know, do this by really just working on the three front teeth, um, you know, it, 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 it's still something that looks really natural. Um, on her lower teeth, you can see a closer up view here of how that is much better aligned. <clears throat> Wow. So that, uh, you know, it's still not perfect, but it's something now that when a person glances at her teeth when she's smiling, it doesn't look like anything's really crooked anymore. Right. Whereas before right. it was kind of obvious. And, and most of us, we're, we're not showing that much bottom teeth when we do smile. So right here, you can see here, it's really irrelevant. It, yeah. yeah. We normally show our bottom teeth actually more when we talk than when we smile. Oh, there you go. And so, uh, you know, she was trying to make sure everything looked as good as it could. And so we were really Fabulous able to make for her. a great change, yeah. So it's always fun to be able to help somebody who's got, you know, problems with their smile, really not just improve it, but as we've talked about before, also making them healthier. You know, because she had definite things here that would have just continued to go downhill if she hadn't. Uh, she, it would have just maybe fallen done. out on her if she Or broken or caused right. even got an infection. That could have been a lot of issues that were going on there. Great result there. And again, best way to, <laughs> to figure out um, if the person you're consulting with can do the work is to, is to look at these before and after. So we're going to go right to another case. And Great. Yeah, I can. Uh, Go to one here, it just takes a few seconds. Um, this is a case that's much less um, obvious as the okay. problem. Uh, this is actually a patient um, who works in the dental field. So she had um, crowns, or, or uh, actually I guess they were porcelain veneers on her two front teeth that had been done a long time ago, but were, you know, she, you can see here there's like a little crack starting mm -hmm. on one, a little chip here. And she just felt like they weren't, um, looking good anymore. They, they had been on there a long time. So and they look a little short. They're not as, as long, you know, that width exactly. to, to length proportion is not there. You've taught me Your well. Your eye is getting yeah. well trained. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. So when we changed her uh, to have teeth that, you know, looked healthier and better, not only did we fix the little problems I pointed out, but we also made them a little longer. A little bit longer. Um, because yeah, that, that definitely improves the proportion of the teeth so they look um, prettier. Um, you know, there's some little characteristics built in down here, a little translucency, mm -hmm. a hint of a little whitish spot, which, you know, sh her natural teeth have. So we're picking up some of those natural effects to make it look real. And how do you do, I mean, that's just, is that kind of a layering? It just is amazing to me how you do that with It's with exactly that what it is. It's layering the materials. In this case, it's porcelain, so it's done by the lab technician or the ceramist, and they build in the exact shading that they want to use, and then when that's, you know, fired in the oven at extreme you know, temperature to wow. create this uh, effect, it looks this real. If we do it with bonding, then as I build it up, you know, with my own hands, I'm just using different shades and colors and intensities of material to get those same effects. And, you know, I think actually in the full face view, it almost looks like those two teeth are more noticeably, right. you know, older or not looking right. And so she just really wanted it to look like it blended in and um, wanted them still a little bit brighter uh, mm -hmm. so that they would be um, nicer looking, but uh, um, it's always nice, to, again, to be able to give somebody, you know, exactly what they're looking for. That's fabulous. You know, we're talking about brightness. When people come to you and say, I want white, 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 white teeth, what do you, what do you say usually? Well, I first say that if they want to go for white teeth, it's a good idea to bleach first, okay. try to get their natural teeth white. Now, if they already know they want to have some uh, changes in their smile other than just color, or if they know they want to go really Hollywood white or something like that, then I think um, we certainly talk about being naturally white um, versus artificially white. And big difference, right? Yeah, I think there is a big difference. And the one thing that I tell people on a pretty regular basis if they're looking for that white, I'll say, well, if that's really what you want, I'll do it under one condition. And then I pause to make them ask what? Well, I'm, and I'm, I say, what? <laughs> I say, only if you never tell anybody I'm your dentist. 
because I don't want to have someone out there saying, oh, you know, I, I had Dr. Wilhite do my smile when I think it looks fake. So I make sure that, you know, we're going to do something that looks really natural and Fine. pretty and healthy, but, but that it still looks real. Awesome. Well, and, and again, yeah, you, you pride yourself on the reality and the naturalness of what you do and to have someone that insists on going that, that Hollywood, right, that's not you, so you'll do it because you, you want to help your patients be what they want to be and comfortable with what they've got. That's very interesting. So let's take a look at another case. What's going on here? This is a case, um, I'm just going to show you one before and after picture of, okay. of, of her because some patients don't like us to use their facial views. Okay. But she had some old dental work, which is yep, another you problem. Can see. Mm -hmm. And um, you, know, you can see one tooth that's got like the little dark line here, right. so you know that's a crown. It's actually a bridge on three teeth here where there's a missing tooth uh, right here. So those three teeth are on a bridge. And then she had some bonding that wasn't very well done on these two teeth. So she had a combination of things going on, none of which was looking very well. Plus, she has a little bit of a gummy smile. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, um, within moderation, actually I think can still look very nice and make a smile look pretty if the teeth look really nice. Right. So in her case, we did a little bit of a gum lift. We changed out that old bridge for a, a bridge that really had wow. a good contours and uh, internal characteristics to make it look natural. And we did pour some veneers on the two teeth that had bonding. So this is actually just five teeth that we did in her case, the, the four front teeth plus um, this uh, canine that's on the right of the screen, and uh, a gum lift. Amazing. But what a huge uh, improvement. I mean, this right. is the kind of thing that you could feel like you probably could see from across a room, you know, uh, whereas before, how could she smile without somebody thinking, uh, it's too bad, you know, she's got a dental problem. Oh, yeah. Whereas afterwards, exactly. they just think, what a lucky person to have such a beautiful smile. And it looks natural. Those look like, they don't look like fake. They don't look like veneers. They don't look like, you know, dent. They just, they look like her natural teeth because it's just such a, a great job in, even, in blending those colors and the, and the shading. And Even where the, the, the tooth is missing, which is this uh, second tooth uh -huh. on the right of the screen. I mean, the way it looks like it's growing out of the gum tissue, whereas before it just kind of looks... Like it's just stuck, there. stuck on there, yeah. I mean, that's a big effect for making something look natural, especially when someone wow, has the gingiva visible in their smile. And again, I think the amount of gum that she's showing now is actually a beautiful look right. when the teeth are beautiful. So what is, what's entailed in a gum lift? What do you, I mean, obviously I would, I'm assuming they, they cut, you cut mm -hmm. a little bit of the gum off, right? Yeah, or, and usually you, we're using an instrument that works like a laser, some people uh, oh, just we okay. can just trim a little bit away. Um, sometimes, if we're doing enough of a change, which wasn't what we did in her case, it was just a matter of just trimming away a little bit of that excess uh, gingiva. But sometimes they actually have to have the bone under the gum uh, modified too. Mm. So that's a surgical procedure, which right. is definitely more involved, but still something that can be done in the office. It's a pretty quick recovery, usually just a few days where they're uncomfortable. Uh, nothing real painful typically, but um, where you know you're not going to want to go to a party uh, for a couple of days. But then after that, you know, it's no big deal. So yeah. I mean, it, it's it's um, nice to be able to make that change if that's part of what someone needs. Right. Well, it's interesting too because there are there are a lot of people that that do have, uh, as you say, gummy smiles and not real, and they may not realize there's something I can do about that. You know, even if I change my teeth and I do everything, I'm still I still have those gums that. You know, kind of show through when I smile. So that's that's um, a good thing to know is a, is a possibility here. So, tell us uh, about this next case. This next case, uh, since we look at upper teeth mostly all the time, I'm going to actually show you a case that has some lower teeth too. Uh, in his case, he's his problem on the top and the bottom were these gaps. Um, so we did some bonding to close the gaps, uh, lengthen nice. the teeth a little. He still didn't want his teeth much longer. I would have recommended a little, a little longer bit than longer, this. right. Um, gotcha. And I think at this point you would agree that would have looked a little better if you yep. followed my advice there. Yep. Um, <laughs> but you know, it depends on what people want to have done. This is the lower, which we rarely get to see, uh, you know, in this much detail, but he had a gap. Now on an, if that gap was on the upper teeth, we'd really have trouble uh, making the two front teeth look natural because they need to be very symmetrical. But lower teeth don't need to be so symmetrical. It's typically not noticed. So you can see here, I, I made both those teeth 
on the sides of the gap wider to close it, but it doesn't really stand out a lot no, that the two front teeth all. aren't the same, you know, that, that they're not symmetrical. So it's really interesting how, you know, there are differences between upper and lower and we can get away with things on the lower that we don't necessarily get away with here. I've even thrown in an x-ray here to kind of show you where that arrow is pointing. That's where the bonding is and you can see how smooth it is. So when bonding or porcelain is done, uh, it should be really smooth so that people can floss uh, normally without having any places that catch or tear. Same thing on the other side. Um, probably. Uh, we don't see x-rays on this show very often. Oh, interesting, um, yeah. But certainly we love to finish up with a person's face. And as a, a, a young guy who's got these gaps on his front teeth that bothered him, and now, wow. you know, I mean, I think everybody would agree. It just makes him a better looking young man. Yeah, it's a beautiful smile. And he's, he just, as we've, say, we've seen in the past, you can see people, they smile bigger now that they've got this beautiful, beautiful yeah. smile. So it actually lights up their whole face. You can even and, see it in their eyes. Uh, right, it's, it's, right. There's something about it that's wow. uh, um, overall better. So um, again, we talk about longevity and, and, and pricing and, you know, talking to your cosmetic dentist, dentist about, you know, what your budget is. So what you did there for him, how long would something like that last? Yeah, so um, in his case, because it's bonding, um, I, tell, I tell him um, and any other patient that you probably can expect it to go up to 10 years because I'm, I'm gonna do it really well. And I think most of the people that are coming to me are gonna take pretty good care of it. I mean, we talk about doing the precautions, uh, not using your teeth as tools, and if you're grinding your teeth when you sleep, to be sure to wear a nighttime appliance. So those two things are really critical. And in his case, um, you know, I don't keep seeing my patients usually for a long time. They usually go back to their regular dentist uh, mm -hmm. for their normal stuff. So, I mean, that case was done probably over 10 years ago and he hasn't come back yet. So I think he's probably still enjoying it. Good, good, that's nice to know. All right, we have another um, sort of case study to look at here. And we are talking about basically improving smiles no matter what the issue there really is a solution there really is a solution for whatever that issue might be um, this next case is a patient who again i don't think most people would say is a bad smile but there's just some irregularities you mm -hmm. know the, the shapes of the teeth and the coloring of the teeth weren't quite right um, this is a patient who we went back and did 12 teeth to try to make everything wow. a lot more balanced um, this is a porcelain veneer, so it's a little, um, you know, I'd say the top level of what can be done. Uh, most people uh, choose to do bonding, and I do a lot of bonding in my office because it's, it's certainly something that fits in more people's budgets. But this is still, you know, when somebody wants the maximum longevity and that it fits their budget, it's a fantastic way to give them a really great look. You know, we try to build in some natural things like the front four teeth should be a little bit brighter than the third teeth and the ones behind that. And if, and if they're all the same color, it has a tendency to look kind of fake, Very and the fake, third right. teeth have a tendency to look too prominent. So in her case, um, you know, we're able to do this in a way that you know, just definitely improved things. She also had a little a gum lift to even out the gum line on the top and a little gum grafting so that on the bottom it was more covered up. She had a lot of gum recession on those bottom two teeth because of a little, um, genetic problem there where the, the gum just didn't oh, quite I develop see. right uh -huh. but that was improved and uh, but focusing on the top teeth with uh, a little bit of a gum lift to help us make the teeth a little longer besides lengthening a little bit again you can see the color here the forefront teeth is definitely a little bit brighter than the third teeth and mm -hmm. on back um, that is such an important aspect of making you know this look real plus you know some of the translucency at the you know biting edge of the teeth that you can visualize in here shouldn't be um, something that stands out or looks uh, too obvious, but it certainly should be um, noticeable when you look for it. From a normal distance, you know, you're not going to notice things oh, like that. Wow. But here's an, again, an example where when you look at it close up, you certainly see a lot of details, but the big picture sometimes is where you see the most dramatic change. And you can see how, how this all fits together with her face in a way that just looks uh, great, brightens her up, makes her feel better. Absolutely. And just looks very, very natural. And that's, uh, you don't always find that when you see people go and, and have stuff done. Um, very true. It, it's, 
it's truly an art and we've talked about this and that's why you know someone that focuses on this if you go to a dentist who most of his work is filling cavities and cleaning teeth and doing just normal maintenance but does cosmetic dentistry maybe once a month maybe that's not you know maybe for something minor it's okay but if you're gonna do a total transformation maybe that's not um, and it really well, depends on how I mean, um, kind of particular a person is. Sure. You know, lots of people feel like if their teeth aren't, you know, um, really dark or if there's not a big gap or, you know, something really obvious, they feel perfectly fine with their teeth. And I think that is great. I don't think all smiles have to look just the same. But if it bothers someone, you know, then I think if, if just closing the gap for instance, would, would make them happy and it doesn't have to be a perfect blend or, or match, then that's good too. But if someone really is looking to be able to look in a, a, a magnifying mirror even and be able to wonder, you know, what did I do five years ago or whatever? I mean, then you really want to see a dentist who does a lot of cosmetic dentistry. Gotcha. Um, it's always good to see someone who does something often um, if, you're, if you're really concerned about the outcome. All right, well, let's take a look at another example of a, a before and after someone who came to the Smile Design Center in Metairie and said, hey, I've got some things I want to correct. I may not even know exactly what to do to correct them. Like, it, it, you know, they may come to you sometimes saying, well, the, I think the solution is whitening. And you may say, hey, there's some other issues here that we can make the smile look even better. It's not just about color. It's also about shape. And a lot of people don't even think about that. It's very true. Um, yeah, this next example is one that I, I think is really um, fun one to look at because uh, he's a young man who's got um, kind of small teeth, and he's a he's a he's a big guy in a way that you know like a football player kind of uh, build, but his teeth looked very small and, and just didn't fit with his uh, his look. But right um, now, when you're not seeing his whole face, they look fine. They're they're nice cut. I mean, they don't look. They don't look that bad. I so would totally I, agree. And they're yeah. very healthy. So okay. that's always okay. a good thing to start with. In right. his case, he was purely looking for a change in the way they looked. He mm -hmm. wanted something that fit. It was interesting because his mother had actually had treatment done um, a few years before. And gotcha. as he aged, he realized, she realized that he you know, needed so So he had been educated by his mother, I think, to some degree, too. <laughs> okay. But we made his teeth bigger as well oh, as brighter. Wow. And just gave him a smile that also was fuller so that um, it really fits his face now. I mean, even in this close-up view, there's no question everyone would agree that the smile is better than it was before. Right. But, um, you know, again, it, it helps to be able to start with something healthy that you can build on. And in his case, we did it, this with bonding. It's that type of bonding called enhanced bonding where it wow. really looks natural. Um, so even Absolutely. at these close-up views, I mean, I think if, if someone only looked at that after view, they just think he had nice teeth, you know? Right. I mean, it, it, it doesn't, you know, look bad. But, you know, here again, I think looking at his whole face, you know, very nice looking young man yeah. with uh, just teeth that were too small for his, his build. And so when we did the after, oh my goodness. Uh, it just fits, it works. And, you know, a lot of times people think, well, men aren't as particular or they're not as, um, you know, I don't even really want to use the word vain. They're just not as self-aware of how their appearance affects their life. And women are much more tuned in to mm -hmm. that, I think, than men. But, but men are coming around, and, and it can make a big difference. And, you know, hear him talk about how, you know, the compliments he got and the, mm. the, the reactions he got from, you know, girls he was talking to <laughs> or <laughs> things like that. I mean, it's just really uh, fun to be able to get that kind of feedback. That's amazing. And, and you know, a lot of people would look at him and say, well, what would you even do to correct? I mean, it, it doesn't, it, it, it's just, it takes someone who really knows their stuff to figure out how to get that result. Because I would look, take a look at him, his before picture and say, gosh, what do you, how do you, how do you do that? I mean, there's nothing obviously wrong, you know, yeah. so. Well, we have time for uh, another case. So let's take a look at uh, someone else who came in and said, hey, fix my smile, improve my smile. Yeah, um, this one case should be perfect to wrap it up then. This is a case that um, is an older guy. Um, and again, we'll give a little uh, focus on men here just to, to be sure that everybody knows that this isn't just for women. But um, this guy had some obvious issues with the front four teeth not being uh, in line. 
And so um, he didn't want to go through orthodontics because he's an adult, you know, he's uh, actually in the dental field and didn't want to have to, to go through that. So with bonding, I was able to make those teeth look uh, aligned. And so crowding wow. cases where teeth are a little crooked and, and not aligned, those can be some of the more challenging ones, but uh, some of the most rewarding too. So if you look here at how his bite is as well, I mean, this is something that besides making him look better, we're able to make his bite a little better. You know, maybe at some point he'll decide he'll want to do the bottom teeth too. But the top teeth, as you could see in the smile view, uh, are what really showed. And so, you know, this is a, a truly, I think, um, good example of being able to do something very conservatively, just doing bonding on those four front teeth, not having to drill the teeth down virtually at all. I mean, you can see where a couple of the teeth are sticking out just a little bit. We contoured those back uh, just a little before I did the bonding. But, you know, if you go back to his smile view, uh, whoops, let me go back one more. Um, go back to his smile view, you can see, you know, how nice that really fits in, you know, to that space between the lips. And with slightly longer teeth, he looks a little younger at the same time. Right. And, and would he, you know, maybe somebody else might have said, well, you need braces first to correct some of that stuff. And you were able to work around that. It, yeah, and you know, as an adult, many people just aren't in a position to really uh, be able to function with braces. You know, right. um, certainly someone like in your business wouldn't be able to, right? Where <laughs> you're on TV tough. or yeah. whatever. Um, there are lots of people who are in sales, or you know, maybe they're at a time in their life where they just know they need to look their best, and they just are very concerned about having braces. Now today, we can do Invisalign or techniques like that where they can remove the appliance, but this is something that we could even consider instant orthodontics, you know, um, that's appropriate for a lot of people too. Right, and, and in some cases it's more of an illusion than it, you're, you're not really moving things, you're um, building and working on the teeth around them for exactly. an, an effect that's, that has the same result visually, but you're not having to, to be as dramatic. And for some people, it's even better not to have to go through the orthodontics. You know, if the teeth oh, are, yeah. or if the roots are and the gums are healthy, then you're just doing the, the minor changes you need to and letting them get on with their life right away. <laughs> all right, awesome. Thank you for all of those examples. It was great to see what can be done to improve someone's smile. And you can get more information about improving your smile from Dr. Will Hyde's office. Thanks so much for being here tonight. It's the Smile Design Center in Metairie, 831-1131. Thank you for being with us this evening. I'll see you next time on Healthline.